Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right, all right. How's everybody doing out there? This uh, episode is kind of a tough one for me. I got to say, this is where I normally read the news, but there's like no good news. Uh, And I I look at the news and the stories I've picked out, and it just makes me angry. First of all, you know, all these drivers who said they were opposed to AB5, right? Opposed to being treated like an employee. And now you're you're not an employee. You're a 1099 still, and you can't get unemployment. Isn't that crazy? If you're an employee, you'd be one of the millions of people who are going and and applying for unemployment and are going to make some money uh, for this period of time when there is no work. And I'm really irritated with Uber and Lyft, too, you know, because, yeah, if you get sick, they're going to give you two weeks of pay, right? Like two grand over two weeks. Big fucking deal. If you can't work for two to three months, right? Or if you're going to go work and expose yourself to coronavirus, to COVID-19, you know, you're on your own. You're on your own, right? There's no support. You're just like, we're like the uh, the debris on someone's boot, right? Uh, and, and, and why? Because Uber and Lyft have refused to call us, to treat us like, well, they treat us like employees. They don't categorize, categorize us like employees. And here's, the, here's why. Here's why. Here's why they're fighting so hard. So you drivers who are opposed to AB5, you're right there with Uber and Lyft saying, this is how you wanted it. And this is why they wanted it. Because this happens. You know how many millions of dollars they would have to be spending in unemployment insurance to cover all of these drivers who can no longer work? Yep. Well, they fooled you. And uh, and you're an independent contractor, so you just got to figure it out. Figure out how are you going to get through this. Figure out how you're going to put food on the table. Um, you know? So shame on Uber and Lyft for not not classifying us as as employees and treating us as employees. And now they're not paying any unemployment insurance when when this kind of a uh, tragedy happens and uh, and drivers are forced not to work, right? Demand is down as much as 70% in some markets. And if you do work, you're going to have people getting in your car and you don't know what the hell they've got, right? They're just sitting in your back seat breathing, you know, for a 30-minute trip. Wow. You know, that's a lot to ask. It's a big ask. And um, that's the situation we're in. So it's a difficult, it's a difficult episode for me uh, because there's no, no good news, right? The Motley Fool has an article called Lyft Spoke Too Soon. On March 3rd, CFO Brian Roberts spoke at an investing conference saying that, you know, Because of this coronavirus, business was going to be good because people were less likely to take public transportation and more likely to take private. And then here we are two to three weeks later, and their price, their stock price has dropped by like 60% in that amount of time. There's a little graph here that uh, the Motley Fool put together. And uh, yeah, terrible, terrible. Uh, What's happening to, to rideshare driving? 
people are staying at home, right? Shelter, shelter in place. Um, who's, who's going out? You know, no one's going out to restaurants. Uh, people are having food delivered. Uh, people are having groceries delivered. Um, so yes, he spoke too soon and it's all kind of turned to crap. All right, next one. Uber stock skyrockets after CEO says it has plenty of cash to get through coronavirus. Well, there's the cash that they have that they should be giving to us, the drivers, for unemployment benefits. But uh, nope, nope. Let's let's fight to stay independent contractors because we want we want to believe Uber and Lyft that they have our best interest at heart, and uh, you know they really they really they really got our back. And uh, if we become employees, you know, we're going to lose freedom and flexibility. You got to see that that's just a marketing scam. That's what they want you to believe. When has Uber and Lyft ever had your back? Clearly, they don't have it now. Uh, They've got plenty of cash to get through the coronavirus crisis. And none of that cash is going to go into your pocket unless you get so sick that you have COVID-19 and you have to be sidelined for two weeks. And then you're going to get at the most less than $2,000, right? All right. Next uh, one is called The Hustle. It's uh, it's, uh, COVID-19. The article is called Amid a Pandemic, Uber Drivers Choose Between Health and Livelihood. As a miracle holds up inside, thousands of full-time rideshare drivers are still out on the streets trying to carve out a living. And... uh, so here's what it says. Uh, they're talking about this driver. Say his initials are Mostafa Maklad. Um, he begins in a two-bedroom Daily City, California apartment. He shares with six other Uber drivers. He drinks a cup of coffee, wipes down a silver SUV. By 10 a.m., he's, he's on the streets of San Francisco waiting for the ping of a new ride. Well, Mostafa should be starting earlier than that. And starting at 10 a.m., that's a, that's a dead time. Anyway, um, but I digress. On a good day, it's a tough business. On a day in the middle of a global pandemic, it's a fight to survive. Before coronavirus shut down the city's office, schools, and restaurants, he would give around 40 rides during a 12-hour shift. Yeah, three three per hour. That's about right. Now he struggles to find 15. Wow. More than 10 hours into his rec- his shift on a recent Thursday, he grossed $65. All right, you just gotta you just gotta appreciate what that what that just said. Ten hours, and he's made sixty five dollars. That means he's making six dollars and fifty cents per hour. And he says, "I'll stop when I hit a hundred dollars." So he's gonna he's gonna drive. Uh, let's see, he's already done ten hours. He's gonna do another three or four. Well, the four is the most that he can do if he only drives for one of the companies. You can only do fourteen in a day. And he might make a hundred dollars, and and how much is the gas he's going to spend for a whole tank of gas? That's probably like thirty thirty dollars, thirty to forty dollars. If he's got a hybrid, my hybrid, I could get uh, five hundred and fifty miles, and it costs about thirty dollars to fill it up. So, um, yeah, say thirty dollars if he's driving a, an SUV and it's not a hybrid. Thirty to forty dollars of gas in a day. That's just ridiculous. You know, that's 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 the time where you got to find something else to do. And I've done two two podcast episodes coming up, um, or I maybe there there are going to be two podcast episodes where I talk about uh, other companies that are hiring, uh, looking for drivers, or looking for for people, and then another one where you can take your skills and turn them into into revenue, because that's just six fifty an hour. That's what that says. Normally you should make thirty to thirty-five dollars an hour in San Francisco, and now you're making six fifty an hour. That's like less than twenty percent. You know, that's that's crazy. Uh, and then it says uh, no choice but to drive. Uh, for most, it's a side hustle, but twenty percent of drivers rely on rideshare services as the sole source of income. Sometimes driving up to 80 hours. Well, what we found uh, at the rideshare guy was that 70% of people who drive need to drive to make money to pay their bills. So, uh, yeah, so it's just tough out there. Tough out there. Um, Deemed essential workers, Uber and Lyft drivers have been encouraged to continue business as usual. But the current state of affairs has polarized drivers. In a survey of nearly 400 full-time 
Uber and Lyft drivers, the hustle conducted last week, 57% said they will continue to work at the peril of their health, while 43% have decided to stay home and sacrifice their sole source of income. Great. So, wow. Talk about just decimating the kind of money that you can make. Um, it's, it's not good. All right. And the last article is called, uh, He Was Coughing Up Blood. Uber and Lyft drivers face illness and confusion amid COVID-19 outbreak. This is from Forbes. And it just talks about how it's difficult out there because people are getting into your car and uh, you don't know. You don't know what they've got, right? Um, and and drivers are getting sick, right? Um, oh, here's a, here's a nice little quote from uh, Sergio, or Sergio. He says, as of this announcement, over 1.5 million drivers and over 100 million passengers in the U.S. are infecting each other and will be doing so for weeks on end. I'm sure Uber figured out what would be less costly. I applaud you for this decision, but do the right thing. Suspend, which means if you're sick, you know, you got to get you got to get off the you got to get off the road because you can't be uh, making other people sick. That's just not not the right thing to do. Um According to the Uber driver, the company's new proposal is also problematic. So this is about how they're going to uh, pay people for 14 days of being sick. Um, so that's it. That's it. It's difficult out there, and uh, it's not good. So this is unvarnished uh, the way it is uh, for, for rideshare drivers in America, probably in the, in the whole world right now. It's difficult. The pay that we just saw in San Francisco is like 20% of what it normally is. And uh, you, you got you got to pivot. You got to pivot. So check out my other two podcasts where I talk about ways you can pivot to find other ways to make money uh, because you're just really risking your health. And um, yeah, it's just got to be really difficult working 13, 14 hours to make $100. Um I'm not sure how how you can make that make that work um, for you. All right, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> what are we gonna do? <laughs> it's just uh, it's just difficult. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap. I'm gonna say fist bump to all you out there who who are out there working hard. Uh, you guys rock it every day. I honor you. If you are out there working. Get in touch with me. I'd love to talk to you about what it's like uh, working out there. I'll put you on the podcast right away. I'd love to get some stories about um, what it's like out there on the front lines. All right. Thanks for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.